kids, good morning to each and everyone. I hope you are all safe and I hope everyone is happy and I hope everyone is very much excited to learn another topic for this morning. But before anything else, and before we start with our lesson proper for this morning, may I request everyone to please close your eyes for our solemn prayer. Let us put ourselves in the holy presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day you have given us. Lord, please add love and care to each and every one. Subtract all the hatred and negativities surround us. Multiply your good news and mercy on us. And divide your unending blessings to each of us. Dear Lord, please grant us the Holy Spirit to guide us our class today. All of this we pray to your most holy name. Amen. Good morning once again, kids. I hope you are all excited, but let me introduce first myself to each and everyone. This is your teacher, Darwin D. Apolinario, your cool mathematics teacher for today. Okay, class, our learning competency for today is determine between what two integers the square root of a number is. And for the objective of our lesson for this morning is we are going to determine between what two integers the square root of a number is. Okay class, let us start with our lesson proper for this morning. And our today's topic is all about principal roots and irrational numbers. But before we proceed with our lesson proper class, let us have first a sort of review when we say the word principal root. Principal root class, it is the non-negative value or the non-negative square root value of a perfect square number. And if a number class is a perfect square, then its principal root is rational. However, if a number is not a perfect square, then the principal root is an irrational. And always take note that if a principal root is irrational, the best that you can do for now is to give an estimate value of that particular number. Determining between what two consecutive integers the square root of a number lie. Remember, if the principal root is an irrational number, the easiest way you can do is to determine between what two integers the square root of a number lie. But before that, we have to know how to compare radicals and principal roots. There is only one golden rule. Remember, there is a positive correlation between the radicand and the principal root. This means that if the uh, radicand increases, the principal root increases and vice versa. If the radicand decreases, the principal root also decreases. Let's have an example. The square root of 121 is greater than the square root of 100 because 11 is greater than 10. The square root of 4 is less than the square root of 9 because 2 is less than 3. Not identify which radicand or which principal root is greater than or less than. You just have to concentrate on the numeric part. If it is greater than, it is greater than. If it is less than, it is less than. If you have remembered and you can memorize the square roots of up to 400 or 20 multiplied by 20, and if you have memorized that, then congratulations, you did a good job. If you did not, here we have a quick side note for you to see and you to realize why it is very important to memorize these side notes to determine between what two consecutive integers the square root of a number. Our first step is to think of two consecutive perfect square integers 
where the given radicand is in between of them. Consider them as x and y for step 2. Take the square root of x and y. In our third and last step, thus, the given is between the square root of x and the square root of y. Let's apply this for you to better understand. The square root of 77, where does the square root of 77 lie? It must be between two consecutive integers. First step is to think of two consecutive perfect square integers. Where the given radicand in between of them, consider them as x and y. Now look at our side note on the right side, and we can find 77, or the square root of 77, is somewhere between the square root of 64 and the square root of 81. Our second step, we take the square root of 64 and the square root of 81, that is 8 and 9. Because the square root of 64 is 8 and the square root of 81 is 9. The last step, thus, the square root of 77 is between 8 and 9. Another example is the square root of 87. Our first step is to think of two consecutive perfect square integers where the square root of 87 is in between of them and looking at our side notes, the square root of 87 is between the square root of 81 and the square root of 100. For our second step, we take the square root of 81 and 100 which is 9 and 10. The square root of 81 is equal to 9 and the square root of 100 is equal to 10. The last step, the square root of 87 is between 9 and 10. Let's have another example. The square root of 50, first we find two consecutive perfect square integers where the, the square root of 50 is in between them and we can see the square root of 49 and the square root of 64. And we take the square root of x and y, that is 7 and 8. The square root of 49 is equal to 7, and the square root of 64 is equal to 8, which gives us the square root of 50, 50 is between 7 and 8. Another example is 136. Now we'll look at our right side note where it is located, and it's located between the square root of 121 and the square root of 144. Next, we take the square root of 121, which is equal to 11, and the square root of 144, which is equal to 12. Therefore, the square root of 136 is between 11 and 12. Let's have another example. The square root of 243, or the square root of 243 is located between the square root of 225 and the square root of 256. Taking their square roots, we have 15 and 16, and giving us our final answer, it is between 15 and 16. Our next example is the square root of 6, and I have already removed the steps because I assume that you have already memorized it. Let's find where it is located and it is between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9. Now, taking its principal roots, that is 2 and 3, now, we have the square root of 6 is between 2 and 3. Next example is the square root of 160, and it is located between the square root of 144 and the square root of 169. Taking its principal roots, it is 12 and 13. Now, the square root of 160 is between 12 and 13. Next, we have the square root of 94. The square root of 94 is located between the square root of 81 and the square root of 100, taking its principal roots. Therefore, the square root of 94 is between 9 and 10. Another example is the square root of 118. The square root of 118 is located between the square root of 100 and the square root of 121, and taking its principal roots 10 and 11. And we can now conclude that the square root of 118 is between 10 and 11.
Our last example is the square root of 159. Looking at our side note, we can clearly see that it is between the square root of 144 and the square root of 165. Taking its principal roots, 12 and 13. Our conclusion is the square root of 159 is between 12 and 13. Congratulations kids and thank you for listening and watching our video lesson for this morning. We will, have a, we will be having a short quiz wherein we are going to determine what two integers or what two consecutive integers the square root of a number lie. All you have to do is to apply your learning and to apply our skill in identifying or determining those two integers wherein the square root of a number lie. Activity class, all you have to do is to determine what are these two consecutive integers or consecutive numbers wherein the square root of a given number is located. So write your answers in a piece of paper and take a picture of this and submit it to me via messenger. Thank you very much class for listening and watching our lesson for today. Always take note that despite of this COVID-19 pandemic, learning must never stop. All we have to do is to look for some resources where we can find something useful and meaningful that could help us learn in this new normal. So once again, God bless everyone and feel free to message me if you have any questions and clarifications. Once again, God bless and thank you everyone.